Hi, I'm Chuck Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at how to use digital SLR lenses. In this episode specifically, we're giving an overview of how the lenses work and what they are. As we mentioned before in the SLR series, uh, the key thing that defines an SLR is the ability to remove the lens and swap it out for another lens. Now, it's important to know how each of these lenses work and what they'll do. And one of the ways you can figure out part of this is by looking at the lens itself. So each lens typically has a bit of information on it. We've got a couple of key bits of information here. One of them is 24 mm. That stands for 24 millimeter. That's the focal length, and we'll explain that in a second. The second one looks like a ratio, one to and then another number or a series of numbers. In this case, it's one to 2.8, and that's actually the aperture setting. And the aperture is how wide the lens will open. Now, one thing that's important to note on each of these lenses as well is that each of them is pretty much manufacturer specific. So we've got a Canon lens on a Canon camera here, but it won't work with, say, Nikon. So with the camera manufacturers, you've got Canon, Nikon, Sony. A lot of those cases, the lenses aren't interchangeable. They are pretty much manufacturer specific. Third party manufacturers like Sigma, for example, Tamron, uh, those kinds of manufacturers will make lenses for other cameras. So this Sigma one will actually fit onto this Canon camera because it's designed for the Canon mount. So now to understand the individual numbers that are on here. Now the first of these numbers to understand is focal length. And focal length is a number that occurs inside the camera and it's hard to get your head around if you're just coming to this for the first time. In fact, it's hard to get your head around sometimes even if you've been using lenses for a while. But the key rule when you're looking at the focal length on the lens, in this case 24 millimeters, is that the lower the number is, the closer you can get to an image and still have it in the frame. And the higher the number is, the further away you have to be to get that image in the frame. So you can actually get something small from further away. Whereas a, a smaller number, like 24, you'd actually have to get right up close to it. So you can look at something like 24 as a wide angle, and something like, say, 100 as more of a telephoto where you can actually get in closer from afar. In this, in this case, we've just got 24 millimeter here because this is what you call a prime lens. It only has one zoom rating here. Other lenses may actually have a couple. In the case of this lens right here, we have 120 to 400 millimeter. And that's because it's a zoom lens. When we zoom this out, it actually opens up. So we can actually change our focal length just by twirling the zoom knob. That means we can go anywhere from 120 all the way up to 400 and get in even closer. Now you'll see we have a, a zoom ring in this case uh, on, on such lenses that will actually move the lens and uh, change that focal length. Now the second number that we showed earlier is the aperture rating. Now we have 1 to 2.8. Now that's f2.8 on the camera or if you're in aperture priority mode you can set it to 2.8. Because this is a fixed focus lens, again, this only has one number. It's 2.8, and that's how wide the lens can open. In a case of a zoom lens like this, we actually have a couple different numbers here in that spot. So we have 120 to 400, that's the zoom rating. And then beside that, we've got 1 to 4.5 dash 5.6. Now, what that means is as you zoom out, so we've got the this again. So it's at 4.5 now because it's it's all, zoomed all the way out, and as you zoom in, like so, and the lens extends, then less light gets into it because you're actually increasing the barrel, and less light can make it all the way from one end of the lens to the other. So now, instead of 4.5, we have 5.6. That is the smallest aperture number you can actually manage with this lens when it's extended at the furthest setting. The other ring that you'll typically see on these, besides the zoom ring, is a focus ring. Now, you have a setting on most of these lenses for AF and M. And just flip that around here. So we've got AF and M. If you switch between those, you'll go between autofocus and manual mode. Now the other thing you may see on lenses, especially long ones like this one, is image stabilization. It comes under several different names depending on the manufacturer. In this case, we just have OS down here, which stands for optical stabilization. We have a couple different settings for that. What it does essentially is when you kick that in, the camera and the lens will sense when you're moving. So when you jiggle the lens, it'll actually mechanically realign some of the elements inside the lens to keep the image stable. Now, optical stabilization is preferable to 
uh, digital image stabilization, which is typically found inside the camera. That what that will do is it'll move the image around on the sensor, and it's not ideal because it degrades the image somewhat. Optical stabilization, as we have inside the lenses, is a purely optical solution, which is essentially using the lenses itself, which means you won't degrade it digitally. Anyways, that's an overview of the lenses. Stay tuned for the other parts in the series where we'll talk about the different type of lenses and what they accomplish. Thank you.